Hello and welcome to another tutorial. I recently asked my subscribers which kind of tutorials they would like to see more of and animation notes or motion graphics was clearly the top requested content. So here is yet another one. In this video we will create this kind of animation, of course using Blender 2.8 and the free add-on animation notes which by the way you can download from crispy.zone. I believe this effect is also referred to as a plexus effect because of an After Effects plugin called Plexus, I guess. Anyway, let's get going. Right, so here I am in Blender 2.8. This is a final 2.8. If you're familiar with my YouTube channel, you might know that I've been using 2.8 alphas and betas uh, for several months now. And now finally we have 2.8. So, how do we do this particle thing? First of all, I'm gonna get rid of that lamp. So you might think that the way to do this is to create a cube, maybe scale it up, make it longer, and then go to the particle uh, settings here, create a new particle system, create a bunch of particles uh, starting at frame one. So all of them. I don't know, maybe lifetime 100 and set our animation to be 100 frames long. Then we choose volume for the source, random, uh, turn off the velocity so that the particles uh, have no initial velocity. We want to also go to field weights and turn off gravity. And then in physics, we can set Brownian to three and dampening to 0.1 or something like that. I'm also going to uh, set the viewport display to wire here. So we get this and when we play this animation, because of the Brownian motion that we have on the particle system in here, this Brownian and some dampening or damping, we get this cool looking animation. But there is a problem with this. And the problem is you can see when we reach the end of the animation and jump back to a frame number one that the, the particles start at a different location. So there's really no way to loop this. Right? So if we take our camera and we like move it through these particles and then when we're at the end and the camera starts at the beginning again the particles start at their initial uh, location again and then we have a chump in our uh, video, in our animation, so this is not loopable. Now there is no way on the particle system here for us to actually influence uh, this Brownian motion that's happening here. You know what we really want is we want the particles to move around but when the camera is at the end here we want the particles to be in the same location again as they were at the beginning so that when we play this in a loop, this animation, we have an infinite loop. And, well, I don't know of an, any way to do this with a particle system. So, in fact, although the title of this is Particles, uh, an infinite loop, we're actually not going to use a particle system. Instead, we're just gonna do everything in animation nodes. So, I'm gonna delete this cube and start from scratch. So, let's just jump right into animation nodes, create a new node tree, T, and then switch off always and switch on these three options. If you've seen any of my other animation nodes videos, this is what I always do. So, let's create something like particles. You know what, first of all I'm gonna create an icosphere and maybe give it a little bit more detail. And this is going to be my thing that I render for the particle. GX, move it out of the way. Also, maybe I'm still getting used to left click select. But I'm forcing myself to use left click select, so 
If I click the wrong button in this tutorial, and I probably will a few hundred times, um, please excuse me. So, now let's create some particles here. Okay, so we need some random locations, and uh, an easy way to do this is the vector random vector node. And we can say, you know what, I want like, I don't know, 300 uh, random vectors and create a list by clicking this. Oh, no, 300 here, seed, it's just a random seed, so 300 vectors. And in order to place our icosphere, or actually instance our icosphere, so we need an instancer, we take the icosphere and we create a bunch of instances, 300 to be exact, and then we can object transform output the location of this uh, these objects to these locations and now we have some random instances I'm still gonna call them particles for this tutorial although they are not made using a particle system we can already see that we need to scale them down a bit which is something that the particle system usually also does and then we get this like a cube of random particles or random locations with the random vector node. Now, how do we get um, sort of a, a tunnel, like a, a 10 meter long thing that we had before? Well, you might think, what if we just stretch out the y axis, but then we don't have an even distribution, right? So we will have uh, them distributed on the x and the c. But on the y, we're going to have like 10 times less or a tenth of the amount of particles. So instead of doing that, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to... Oh, and you know what? Looking at this from the top, we can see that the particles are inside of this. This is like a 4 by 4 cube now, and that's because the scale is 2. So if we set the scale to 1, we have a... 2 by 2 cube, which is fine, maybe even set it to 0.5 so that we have just a 1 by 1 meter cube and then turn down the scale here to have little tiny dots. We'll play with that later. So how do we get a whole bunch of those? Well, we can always create a loop. To create more. So, subprogram loop. Uh, our loop doesn't really need any inputs here because we're just going to use it to do this thing 10 times. So, I'm going to put my random vector node into this loop. I'm going to take the index, which is just going to count, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and plug that into the seed so I get a different. Uh, seed for each loop uh, Then I'm just gonna take 50 particles So the second uh, my second cube of particles has to be moved forward a little How can I do that? Well inside of this loop very easy Just take a, a combined vector node Also take this index plug it into the Y so for the first iteration, this is going to be 0, which is right here. And the next one is going to be 1, which is going to be here. And then 2, 3, 4. And then we have to do some vector math because we actually want to add to these 50 vectors our offset vector here. And then we really just need a generator output so we can click this plus and do a vector list. So this loop just generates an output now and none of this needs to be connected. And now we can take this loop, hit W, invoke a, su a sub program. And let's just create 10 of those QB things. And we 
plug this vector list into the location now. And now we have this, which is when we look at it from the top view, well, this is really tiny now. We have like a 10 meter long array of particles and they're shifted off by half, half a meter on the y axis here. So how, do, how we can correct that by adding another vector math node in here, take all of these vectors here and move them on the y half a meter. So now we have a perfect 10 meter long array of particles. Eh. Zero five. I want to be able to see them a little. So take the camera, Alt G and R, rotate X 90. And I'm going to split the view here and look through the camera here. And we can already see some particles. Of course, they're still too big. But what we're going to do now is animate the camera. And you know how you can animate stuff in Blender? You can use keyframes. You know, go here and then add a keyframe and then go to frame 100, add another keyframe. But for this, I'm actually going to use a driver. So instead of keyframing my animation, I'm just going to go location Y should be hashtag frame divided by 10. So we have 100 frames in our animation. Um, and you can see that the camera moves forward and at frame 100, the camera is going to be exactly at the Y location 10 meters. So no matter how long I make my animation now, camera will always be moving on the Y and I don't have to mess with keyframes. What we need now is when the camera is at the end here at frame 100, it should be looking at the same thing that it's looking at at frame one. So something that we can't do with the particle system is we can just duplicate this stuff here and create the same set of particles in this area. How do we do that? Well, we're going to need more, more particles. So let me just move this thing out of the way. This is our loop. Maybe move it over here. So we need another object instancer for more particles. How many do we have here? We're calling it 10 times and we're, so we have 500 particles in this first um, 10 meters here. We're gonna create another 500 particles and we're going to transform those to be offset. Uh, how do I do this? I'm going to place another vector math node in here. Take these locations and add 10 meters on the Y. And that's the location for the second set. So now we have 20 meters of particles. And since they're we're using the same vector list, the same locations that we created using this uh, sub program here, we can now see that the camera here on frame 100 is looking at the same thing or almost the same thing as on frame zero. So actually, I think I'm going to set the end to 101 frames. And then the 101st frame is the same as the first frame. See? And this is how we can loop through this infinitely. So now if I hit play, and now watch when we hit the end here, you will see that we have an infinite loop. Because we didn't use a particle system, we created our particles using animation nodes. 
Now there might be one little chomp that we can notice. Um, you know what, I'm just gonna create another vector combine. Set this to 0 0.0, I don't know, 0 0.025. And that's just my scale that I wanna use here. So I have little smaller um, particles. One thing we might notice though is while we're moving through the first 10 meters of particles here, we're actually looking at, you know, in, in the distance, we can see a total of 1000 particles. And while we're moving, like at the end here, now we're only looking at 500 particles. So in the distance there, we might see a jump when we jump back from this frame where there's not that much in the distance to this frame where there's a whole bunch of particles in the distance. And this becomes more obvious when we actually uh, give those particles a material like an emission shader. You know what, let's just do that right now. So switch over to EV, the world settings, turn it all black. Now we take this uh, icosphere, give it a new material, set it to emission, and give it some cool blue color. And of course we have to switch, switch, switch on the bloom effect. No EV tutorial is complete without the bloom effect. We that's a bit much. I don't know, 10. Okay, so now we have those particles. Now let's look at this. Um, you know what, maybe I take my camera and set it to 50 so that I get more particles on the sides here. Maybe even more. So now we're looking at the distance here. We can see a whole bunch of particles in the distance. And while we're moving forward, at the end here, we don't have that many particles. So when we jump back here, you can see we're, we're looking at the same particles close to the camera here, but the distance, that definitely changes. And we're gonna see that jump when we play this in a loop. So how do we do, how do we fix that? Well, we have to fade out the particles somehow. The particles in the distance, I just want to fade them to black. Now in cycles, I would probably use uh, the materials or render the mist path and then use the compositor to fade the, the distant particles to black. But in Eevee, since it's so fast, we can actually use volumetrics. And it's super, super easy to do. So let's go back to first frame. Create a cube, go into edit mode, GY1, so that it uh, starts here at the Y0 location. Now take, oops, again, I'm clicking the right mouse button. Take those and GY, what is it, 8? GY8. Is this, is this right? Are we at the 10 meters distance? Yeah, we are. Okay, so this is going to be our uh, volumetrics domain. I'm going to turn this to display wire so that we can actually see the particles. Give it a new material. Go over to the shader editor quick. We don't need, whoops. We don't need this principle, we just need a volume absorption. Plug that into the volume and it's already working. And now all we really have to do is turn up the density so that basically when we're here at frame 101, oh, you know what, we can do something else. Let's create a plane. Rotate X90, GY10, so we have a plane at the end there. And if I give that the same emissive material now, I can turn 
my volume density up to where I really can't see this plane anymore. See here I can see the plane in the distance. So I have to turn up my density to something like this. So now we're fading out all the particles in the distance and we can't see this plane anymore. I can delete the plane now. Now all I have to do for my animation is to move this with the camera. So that while the, while the camera is moving forward, my volumetric domain moves along with it so that when we're in the front here, we still have the particles fading out in the back there. Um, there's an easy way to do that. I could parent it to the camera, but another way is to simply add a copy location constraint, take the camera, and now you can see camera and the domain, the volumetric domain is moving. Now let's check this out here, turn off overlays. So this is what we see on frame one. And this is what we see on frame 101. And it is basically, I mean, it is exactly the same thing. So we can loop this infinitely and let it play here. And you can see we have an infinite loop going. So now we're done with uh, our infinite loop of particles but we're missing that Brownian motion that we had before. Now we don't have Brownian motion, but we can fake it a little bit in animation nodes. So let's go back to animation nodes, to our node tree here. How do we fake Brownian motion? Well, there is a node in animation nodes that is called vector wiggle where is it here and what that does is it creates vectors that are placed at random positions around uh, the center and with an amplitude of x y and z set here and we can plug in an evolution here which usually would be the the frame number okay so if we take an animation time info and plug that into this evolution and then we take our vector wiggle node, create a list of vectors, and we also have to say how many we want. Well, we can use this get length node here. So again, we get 500 random vectors. Definitely have to turn down the amplitude. And we plug that in here now, or take another vector math node and add it here and then of course also in our second in our second set back here we have to do the same thing so vector math in between here and add the vector wiggle whoops to that then we get crazy flying vectors, uh, I mean particles, but because of our vector wiggle, we kind of sort of killed the, the um, endless loop effect here. Because now on frame 101, we're definitely looking at something completely different than on frame one. So now we can't infinitely loop anymore. That is because we're using the frame as the time info node. So basically what we've done now is sort of the same thing that the Brownian uh, motion of a particle system would give us. The Brownian motion also uses the frame or the time information to move the particles. And now we're doing the same thing. But now in animation nodes here, we have this evolution control that we can use instead of the time information. So now let's uh, think about this. We want this evolution to change over time, you know, while we're animating. But at the end here on frame 101, we want 
this evolution value here to be the same as on frame one. So we can get our infinite looping feature back. Now, how can we do that? Well, one easy way that you might think of is uh, this. Let's create a curve circle. And then let's create an empty plane axis. And I'm also going to scale down this plane axis a little so we can see it better. Now let's tell this plane axis to move around on the circle by taking an object constraint, follow path, the circle. We can also click this animate path setting, which, uh, which simply sets this path animation checkbox on the circle here. And it sets it to 100 frames automatically, which is fine for our animation here because we have 100 frames. If your animation is longer or shorter, then you will have to change this setting here. And now when I hit play, you can see that the empty is moving around this circle. And it ends up where it started on frame 100. So we could use this empty position now to influence our evolution. And that way, at the end of the animation, the evolution val value will be the same as at the beginning. So we're going to have to get the object transform input. And we have to plug in our empty here. And now you will notice that if we plug in a viewer here and look at the location and hit play, that nothing changes. Although the empty is rotating around here, the location doesn't change. Also, when you look over here, the empty location is not changing. It's only changing because it's um, following the path, the curve, but we don't get that information. Well, we don't get that information using this object transform input. If we use an object matrix input node instead for the empty, and then we decompose this matrix so we get a, a location again, plug that in here. Now we get the actual location of the empty after the follow path uh, constraint. Okay, so now we can use this. How do we use it? Well, we can separate this uh, vector. Where is it? Separate our location vector. And for example, simply use the X location here to be the evolution. All right, so if we look at it from top, the X location of the empty is going to be somewhere between minus one and plus one, and it's going back and forth here, influencing the evolution, influencing the vector wiggle, and, th and therefore influencing the position of the particles. And they will end up right where they started. Now they're moving, but the movement is very, very small, I believe. Can get some more detail by turning up the octaves here. You can see that the particles are moving. We might even play with this speed here. And now they're moving faster. Now when we look at this and we let it play for a while, we notice that this motion here around the circle, you know, it's very uniform. And we can actually see that in the behavior of the particles. They're not moving like the Brownian motion of a real particle system. So how can we fix that? Well, a very easy way is to not use a circle, but instead use maybe a different kind of curve. Uh, there's an add-on that comes with Blender, uh, which is called something like uh, Curves Extras or something. And for example, we can take a torus knot, which looks like this. Or maybe, what does this look like? Ooh, this looks wild. Ah, let's just take this torus knot. 
Now since Blender 2.8, I think, automatically when you use this uh, add curves, extra curve feature, it automatically gives it some bevel depth, which is why it's so thick here. But we can turn that off. Delete the circle, go to the empty and the follow path here. Set the target to our torus knot. Why is this still here? I don't know. Torus knot. So <laughs> we have to animate the knot. And now the empty is going like this. Okay, so we get a little bit more random movement, but we still have the effect that at the end of the animation, the empty is at the same location where it started, and therefore our particles will be back at their starting position at frame 101. Well, this looks pretty cool. Now when we look at these particles, we can still, still see this sort of uniform movement here. What if we take the C instead of the X? Because when we look at it from, uh, where is it? From the front, the C moves like this. Yeah, that looks, that looks a lot better actually. Okay, now let's, let's add some more randomness. This is already pretty nice but I think we can do better. For example, how about we duplicate this vector wiggle node, give it a different node seed value, just so we get different uh, values here. Maybe take, I don't know, the X for the evolution. And then we don't take the full count uh, of 500 particles. Let's just do number math divide by two, where is it, divide two, take this, divide it by two, and take this length to be the count here and the count here. So now I split this apart, I get 250 random vectors with an evolution set by C, and then I get 250 here, set by x, so I will have a different values, also I have a different node seed. So now I have two different vector lists. I have to combine, nope, I have to combine list, vector, list together again, this one and that one, and then use this result in here. So instead of this list, I'm going to use this list and also down here instead of this list, I'm going to use, hey, this is going to be complicated now, I want to use this list. Wow, this looks, Whee. I have to clean up some stuff here, let's move this out a little. Vector math, vector math. This is just to move it back 10. Okay, so now we look like this. And we should get some more random movement because now half of those particles is gonna move using this wiggle, uh, wiggle node and the other half is gonna move using this wiggle node. I don't know, maybe this helps. Whatever, you get the idea. This is how we create some random movement and how we create some fake particles using 100% animation nodes. No particle system involved here. Okay, now next thing. How do we get those lines in between our particles? Well, that's actually pretty easy. So here, this is our first set here, right? This is the first set for the first 10 meters and we have these locations here. Now there is a node in animation nodes that is called something like find close points, but you can't find this node in the menu here. You have to use control A, which is the search feature of animation nodes. 
simply putting close in there is find close points. You can feed in a list of locations, points or vectors, which is just going to be this list. And then we set this to distance and we can create uh, the edges here. So we create a spline, create from edges. We have to give it the position of the points and the edges. And then we have to create a spline output. So object output, spline, create a new object. Call it, I don't know, connections, enable splines. Uh, ooh, where did it go? <laughs> where is, oh, it, it didn't work. Connections, put that in here. And we have the lines. Look at that. So this connections objects is a spline, is a curve. We can go to geometry and then give it a little bit of bevel depth so we can actually see it in the rendering here. And of course, we're gonna need a material for this. Um, I don't know, emission, something like that. Teal and orange, favorite look. Strength 10. Wee, this looks nice. Okay. So this is what we get, but we only have those nodes. And, and you can, of course, see while we're animating and while the particles are moving around using our super awesome wiggle setup here, you can notice that this find close points nodes set to distance and the maximum distance set here that the connections actually change because it's looking for uh, nodes that are closer together at a maximum di distance of 0.3. So we get this really cool effect here where the particles connect while they're moving. So this is cool. But of course, at the end here, you can see that in our second set of particles in the back here, we don't have any of those uh, connections. Well, how about we simply do the same thing again? So find close points and splines from edges. Duplicate this. Uh, maybe move it in here somewhere. Then we use uh, ba -ba 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 these locations which are the ones in the back. And then again here, these locations. And then we have this list of splines and this list of splines. So we can just go list, combine more, where is it, spline. So we combine this list and that list and put it all into one final object output here called connections and now we should have lines in the back here too yep we do and of course it's all the same in the front and the back so frame 101 frame one same thing perfectly loopable okay so this is done very cool node setup already for our infinite loop and now the last thing for this tutorial i want to show you is the random colors because now all the particles are just blue they have the same uh, material as this ecosphere here which is this blue material how do we randomize these colors and still be able to loop it infinitely because we could just go into the the shading settings the shaders and then, you know, use the object ID or some random value. But then we lose the ability to loop this because the random color will be different here and here. So again, we have to set the color using animation nodes because here we have full control over, you know, basically everything. Okay, how do we do that? 
So we're gonna, I think, need another loop. Right, so here we create the objects. Here, object instancer, this creates the object. Um, the best way to set the color using animation nodes is to actually set the vertex color. Okay, so let's create a new sub program loop. We're gonna loop through a list of objects. So, new iterator, object list. Then, we're like I said, we're gonna need the set vertex color. I'm just gonna find it with this feature here. So, this object will get a new color. We're gonna have to create some, some cool color. How can we do that? Maybe take a random number and take the seed from the index here because we're gonna do this in this loop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Create a random number and then we have to create a color. So where is color? Color, combine color. And I'm gonna go to U saturation value. The U is basically, basically the rainbow. And we're gonna use this random number between zero and one to change the hue. So any color of the rainbow, saturation one, value one, and here we have a random color. Okay, so this loop now gives us a random color and of course we need an object output, I mean an object list list so this this loop takes an object list assigns a random color from the rainbow to it and outputs an object list and now we can simply take this w invoke node and plug that in here our first 500 particles are now piped through this sub program and I'm gonna pipe the second set, the one in the back here, also through this sub program. Again, using the same sub program with the same random number seed values, which creates the same colors of all the particles in the front and in the set in the back, which gives us this infinite loop feature. Now, of course, we have to use this. It doesn't just happen automatically. So maybe I'm just going to do it here. Go to Shader Editor. Take this Ecosphere, which has a material set to it, this emission material. And now I take an input attribute. Oh, you know what? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Animation nodes, no tree. I, oh, it's set to call. Let's just call this, uh, I don't know, super duper, just so you know what's happening. We're actually setting the vertex color to an attrib vertex attribute called super duper now. And we can use that in the shader editor in here. Type in super duper and it gives us the color. Ah, you know what? We're actually using instances here. So we're using the same mesh data. We actually have to enable deep copy here. And of course also here for the second set in the back. And now we have random colors. And that is what it looks like. And it's infinite. Now it starts to play a little slower because I mean all of this has to be executed for each frame, but we have an infinite loop here. Okay, now maybe one thing that I did on my one of my animations before is over here, this very simple color for the particles. We can actually make it look a little bit more interesting by taking an input layer weight and when we look at this facing value here and pipe that through a color ramp, 
maybe turn that up so we just get the outer edge like so and then we have the emission for the middle and an emission for the outer edge and we need a mix shader to mix these two together using this factor and then we have a nice outer edge of course this needs to be glowing and that's basically what i did for my animation that you saw before so now we get those nice particles and of course we can also do that black and white effect that i had in one of the renders which is just a black emission instead of the colorful one with the outer edge like that and you can always go to your connections object which is just the lines and do something here change this to a different color if you want and then you get this cool looking animation okay that is it guys let's go back to animation notes because that's really the most interesting thing full screen and this is it interesting node setup so we have this first uh, loop here that just creates 10 separate you know sets of uh, random positions we create the first set first 10 meters this is the second set with the second 10 meters this loop here which is is in here and also in here just creates the random colors and then all we have to do is move the second set back 10 meters which is happening in here but we're still using just one set of particles which is why this is perfectly loopable because the second set is using exactly the same particles with the same colors and everything just moved back a little and then of course this up here is to create some random motion in the particles we have two different uh, motions set here using this empty location and the empty location is actually moving around this funky knot thing here so that we get some random movement in the particles but we end up after 100 frames exactly where we were at frame one which makes it loopable okay now i just changed the colors around a little bit and i have to mention one thing to render it out of course you just render the first the frames uh, 1 to 100 because the 101st frame is the same as the first that's how we set it up but in the animation we go 98 99 100 and then 1 which is the well, 1 which is the next step so 100 to 1 and then you have this infinite motion uh, also to render out uh, the animation using animation nodes when the auto execution feature is switched on here which you need because you need to execute this node tree for each frame uh, still there is a problem with blender 2.8 and animation nodes you can only render this out using view viewport render animation so don't go to render uh, render animation because that's gonna crash and of course if you render the viewport you also have to make sure that you don't have you know any overlays switched on because what you see in here will be rendered out into the file so go view viewport render animation and then awesome speed of ev even though we have these volumetrics in here to fade out the back uh, this is the speed that you get basically rendering at I would say like two frames per second which is just awesome 
Okay, another thing you can check before you render your animation is that you don't have any particles flying directly at the camera because that takes away from the, the infinite loop illusion. So you can just scrub through here and check that all the particles are missing the camera and this setup is actually very good because if you have, you know, a particle just flying straight at the camera, it looks like your infinite loop um, isn't really infinite. It looks like you cheated. And with this setup here, it looks pretty nice. And if you do have particles flying right at the camera, you just have to go in here and play with these seed values of your vector wiggle nodes here and get different random animations and then uh, scrub through and check again. That's it for this tutorial. I do hope you learned something new today. And if so, please like the video and leave a comment below. Maybe consider subscribing, I really appreciate it. You can find more Blender and Animation Notes tutorials right here on my YouTube channel. Let me also point you in the direction of my Blender Market page and my Patreon page, where, by the way, you can download the finished blend file of this tutorial and many others. Thanks for watching. Crispy out.